So this is our first ever podcast, which we are calling Codcast, and I am John, otherwise known as Johnny Zio on the forums, and pretty much everywhere else, Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, and we got uh, Audi with us and Jen. Hola. Hello. So, being the first uh, podcast here, 50 on the forum suggested that we should really introduce ourselves a little bit more detailed than like our gaming personas that some of our listeners may know through forums and Twitter and the gaming verse per se. So I'll start us off. I'm a, I'm a soup slinger. I, I uh, sell soup for a living pretty much. I run a restaurant in uh, here in Ontario, Waterloo, called Zoop. It's one of the it's the first one in uh, Canada, and we're expanding rapidly here. I have three kids, so a lot of my gaming revolves around them a little bit. My oldest boy loves Skylanders, Pokemon, superhero games. He's all into it. So that's kind of where a lot of my gaming happens a lot lately. We're jumping into Lego Lord of the Rings soon. But Mommy grounded him recently for not listening. So we, we can't play that lately. Otherwise, yeah, that's a little bit about me. How about you guys? Me next? Sure. I'll go. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the COD community may not know who I am because I've been kind of lacking on posting on the forums but if you follow me on Twitter I, you'll know that I'm Jen aka uh, XX Genevieve XX that's my gamer to peg um, <laughs> I am a girl who happens to be a gamer I'm not a girl gamer <laughs> but I'd stress that I, I, uh, um, I'm i 34 years old and I've been gaming probably since I was 2 years old in the arcades uh, single mom to a beautiful preteen daughter who um, won't admit that she likes gaming like mom, but I know she does. Uh, I play a wide range of games. Uh, I tend to favor uh, first-person shooters and RPGs. Um, when I'm not gaming, I work as an office manager for a home oxygen company, which is uh, not something I'm particularly passionate about, but it pays the mortgage, right? So, yeah, <laughs> and that's me. All right, I'll uh, I'll do clean up here. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm Kirby, aka the Outcast, um, father of two, married. I've been doing the whole gaming journalist thing for coming on 13 years now. Uh, games of choices are usually first-person shooters and driving games. Uh, Canadian online gamers is a passion of mine. Uh, that you know, uh, I along with uh, Trevor Houston, aka Mr. Big Cat, and Shad, good old Shad Forsyth, aka Fifty, um, we started to do, and it's grown to where it's at. So my real life consists of working for the federal government, and I'll leave it at that, and mm. um, spending time with my family and romantic walks and soft music. Oh really? Uh, uh, yeah, well, I had to kind of, you know, jazz it up there. Soft music sounds good. So you're talking about COG and getting on to that. So I asked you about this before, but where did the idea of COG come from for you guys and the concept of Game Canadian? Just for people who may not be familiar with it, where this kind well, of podcast fits into all of the scheme of Canadian on online gamers. COG was an amalgamation of uh, a website called Xbox Canadian Live where uh, Shad Forsyth was like a community member and actually did a lot of work on leading the community. I worked for an unnamed gaming site at the time and uh, I basically became a member of XCL and Shad and I started talking and um, we uh, happened to uh, have an idea and COG was born. So XCL was merged with COG, and uh, lo and behold, uh, we're where we're at. So, uh, you know, if anybody's been on our site and read kind of, for lack of a better word, mission statement, we are game Canadian. You know, we love to game. We're Canadians, and uh, we're just a community of happy-go-lucky people where everybody is welcome. So lo and behold, hey. Shad likes to say it was like peanut butter and chocolate. <laughs> and it just mixed. Oh, don't forget about the bacon. Yes, you can never go wrong with bacon. It's, it's all mixed in there. Well, that's probably a good segue into say how we got involved at a site. I like like um, Kirby. He was there before me. I found XCL one day when I, I got uh, 
my Xbox and I got tired of playing with kids online. And I started searching mm. Canadian forums, adult, adult gamers and things like that. And I stumbled across XCL um, somehow through a post on the Xbox forums that pointed me there. And somehow, like a week before, they closed people with just being able to randomly sign up. I got in and started doing the, the just getting involved in the community, getting to know the guys. Then uh, Kirby here one day posted on the forums, like, hey, we need somebody to go to Toronto for an NHL 2K9 event for the Wii. And I'm like, that sounds cool. I'm staying at home watching my kids while my wife's working. I may as well go do that. And that's kind of how I got involved. I did a little preview piece on that. Then my first review for a great Canadian developed game was, uh, what's that game? By Silicon Knights. I can't remember the name right now. But, on the uh, Pardon me? No, oh, uh, no, no. Too human. Too human. Yes. yes, my first review ever was too human, and uh, ouch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I got involved with XCL and by extension through an unknown website that we won't mention. It's the website that won't be named, and got into uh, Canadian online gamers myself. So it's and uh, Kirby and Chad and uh, Trevor and. The gang have entrusted me with kind of uh, trying to get this podcast going. So it's been uh, a little bit of time, but here we are. We're finally doing the first one. So, and Jen, how, how did, I, I don't even know. I know you got involved a little bit with the website, but I don't know how exactly you got involved. Well, um, you know, I got to know uh, you guys via Twitter. I, you know, um, I've always been active in the Canadian gaming community through other ventures and just doing my own thing, but... Um, you know, I really wanted to contribute uh, to my passion. Um, so I actually approached Kirby about uh, being a contributor on the site because I, I like the community. I, I like what, uh, um, you know, that you're family oriented, uh, somebody I could identify with. So I approached uh, Kirby earlier this year and asked him if I could start being a contributor on the site. So here I am. Awesome. It's good stuff. So, you know, we're here to talk about gaming, so let's talk about gaming. What's everybody been playing? Um, for me, um, past couple of weeks, I've actually beaten uh, a couple of games. You know, I have went through Halo 4 on Heroic and beat that, and it was uh, not a... I'm really, really not really impressed with the campaign myself, but I'm really, really impressed with the game overall and what they did with having Spartan Ops and such great multiplayer it's oh, come on. How really, can really you cool. not have liked that story? It, without spoilers, because there's still without people spoilers, who it. Um, like myself. <laughs> it's going to sound really, really weird, but I couldn't get emotionally involved as much as I did the other games. See, where and, I was and a lot, a lot of people feel that the emotion in Halo 4 is a lot more there. Which I would usually agree with. I found myself more attached to the story, more uh, without ruining it with Cortana's plight. You know, she's an AI who is supposed to basically be taken out of service after seven years in terms <laughs> of the Halo lore. And uh, seeing her start to go degrade the way she was, which was known that would happen, so it's not a spoiler. Um, you know, and just that story and... It's not even a reboot of the franchise, it's a continuation, and I think what 343 did with it was amazing. They were able to make the story their own, but my biggest complaint was the gameplay is too familiar. Well, they did a lot of things to switch it up with well, more multiplayer, maybe not the single player. Multiplayer, where they have all those options with the loadouts and everything, which I think is absolutely amazing that you can rank up your character, then... I want this ability. I want to be able to use these weapons and just make all these, like, was it five or six custom loadouts that you can have? Mm hmm. Which, where does that come from? Yeah, they, 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 uh, I'm not a Call of Duty person, but isn't it from there? Yeah. Yeah. And, and kind of like the prestige kind of stuff a little bit too. I feel bad. This is the first time Jen will be so quiet because she hasn't played the game yet. No, I haven't. I'll let you guys continue, but I haven't been playing much other than uh, previewing and reviewing. So yeah, it's it's kind of hard. Sometimes you just gotta go. I'm playing for myself. It's Christmas it's, time. Yeah. Yeah, I just just gotta play for myself, and I know it's kind of hard. I've been, as I mentioned to you guys earlier before we started recording, I'm playing um, Guardians of Middle Earth, and it's uh, 
it, it seems to be a good game so far, but like I said, I have a hard time getting into games because you need at least five human players playing it, and it's not going to be a big game like Call of Duty or Halo 4 where there's so many people playing the game that I had to wait seven minutes last night before I just gave up and went to bed before jumping into a game. It, it shouldn't... Like, I can pop into a tutorial level and skirmish, but there's no way I can gain experience in that game. So basically how it works is it's... Uh, I can easily relate it to kind of like StarCraft a little bit or kind of like that where you... Uh, maybe StarCraft's a bad example. But it's sort of a real-time strategy adventure game. Um, hey, speaking of Halo, it's kind of like Halo uh, Halo Wars in a little bit, where you have your base and their base. You're going to go into their base and take out their towers. These towers can be upgraded so that they can heal or fire weapons faster or siege, things like that. And there's soldiers that produce at other different points. And you basically use your heroes. It's gonna be like Gandalf, or they're gonna have Bilbo, or the villains like Gollum and one of the Wraith Kings, or things like that. And you just fight each other, and you level up throughout the throughout the game, and gain experience. You go up to level 14 in each game. But that level doesn't carry over to any other game. What happens is you gain experience within that game. It's kind of complicated. You gain experience within that game session, which you can use to buy and get coins to buy gems that will give you better abilities. Then you can unlock other loadouts, and you can buy other spells or commands that you can do. But I've only been able to play one match, so I can't really unlock a lot of those abilities yet. But it seems kind of neat, but it's just poorly executed in the sense that there's only an online... It's online only. I can't just play a single player against computers for fun. Yeah, that's kind of what I've been playing. And I beat Assassin's Creed 3 recently, which uh, I don't want to ruin for anyone, but I don't know if you guys are going to play that. <laughs> it's in my huge, giant backlog pile. So, yeah. Don't day. expect much from it, and you might enjoy it more. I had great expectations and was sadly disappointed. And I'm a, I'm a huge... Assassin's Creed fan. Like I don't know if I know Kirby knows the all the statues I have. I'm wearing I'm I'm wearing an Assassin's Creed hoodie right now, and I have an Assassin's Creed tote bag, and I got two different belt buckles. And in the right. mail in, in the mail in the mail coming right now, I have four of the posters with all the weapons on it that are associated with each of the assassins. Mm-hmm. So Altier, Desmond. Um, you have a problem, Connor, and I'm going to frame them. And I have an Assassin's Creed 3 uh, poster that I'm going to plaque just to put on the wall just because it's so cool. Yes, I do have a problem. I'm an Assassin's Creed freak. But uh, it's just, uh, it's awesome. And they could have, like, overall, here's how I can sum up Assassin's Creed 3. Amazing graphics. The story was pretty decent. But if anybody wanted to get upset about an ending and write home to Ubisoft like they did to uh, Bioware, they should have done it for Assassin's Creed 3. The, the ending was absolutely horrible. It was not what I would expect them to go at all. Which in a way, it could be a good thing. I, I'm disappointed. I'm emotionally invested in this. And I'm like, W2F moment. Like, what the hell? What was all that about? Why? It's It, it was something where I felt like I should have had a choice as a character where I could have, there were certain outcomes that both of them were bleak, but I could have chose, but they just chose which way they wanted to go for me. And then you're stuck with that ending where you kind of get a bad ending with Mass Effect 3 per se, but you got to choose a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's what I've been playing. What have you guys been playing? Go ahead, Chen. But, 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 <laughs> um, or, or well, did you have something you else to, to say? How far do you want me to go? <laughs> how far do you want to go? Just in the recent week or so. <laughs> well, um, I'm not going to give away too, too much because I want you guys to go to the site to read my preview, but I got to play Metal Gear Rising Revengeance quite a bit last week. Um, and if you're a Metal Gear Solid fan, this really strays quite far from that formula, but 
I, I definitely encourage you know fans to definitely check it out. Um, it is it's a collaboration from Kojima Productions and Platinum Games, and um, you may be familiar with Platinum's previous work. Vanquish was uh, one of theirs. Bayonetta. Um, Vanquish so is a good game. it's uh, what's that? Vanquish is a good game. I, I, I reviewed that. I think. And Bayonetta was actually pretty unique. Certainly unique. And, you know, um, I guess I've heard some people describe this as a, a Vanquish slash Bayonetta with Metal Gear. So I guess that's a great way to describe it, considering who is involved in it. But the um, main character is Raiden, who um, many of you re- will remember from the previous games. He was kind of a whiny crybaby sort of character, but... Um, he really steps up in this role. He is really kick-ass. Um, it's very fast-paced, very fluid action. Definitely, there's not a lot of stealth involved in this game. But, uh, uh, I, again, I encourage you to head over to the site and check out my preview. Um, and, yeah, I, I really, I, I think that um, I, Metal Gear fans should definitely check it out. I know... Um, I think a lot of them are, uh, I don't want to say disappointed, but they might be reluctant to play given the, the gameplay style, but uh, it does take can into the series. So uh, it's definitely something they should check out. Well, what I heard about it is um, it's what Ninja Gaiden should have been. Or would you, I don't know if you're a Ninja Gaiden fan, but would you? Which I'm not, so I can't really. Okay. Yeah. What have you been playing, Kirby? Um, hmm. I've been chipping away at the Spartan Ops in Halo 4, uh, which, by the way, I love. I think that was one of the smartest things that 343 did with this game. Uh, we're, we're just chipping away at Episode 5. So they're going to do a hiatus by the looks of it until the new year. So that'll give me time to catch up on that. And I've also been still chipping away at Borderlands, although I finished the campaign... Mm-hmm. During our uh, Extra Life fundraiser, I um, uh, playing through on the Vault Hunter mode, which is kicking my ass. Uh, it's amazing how you have to really be pretty pretty leveled up and have some pretty good weapons to even stand a chance to do anything. But those have been the two games that have been taking up my most time, along with I a forgot. little Super Mario. Sorry. Yeah, I forgot why. No, like I've been playing <laughs> Far Cry Three when I have a chance to play. it. On my own, so I did. I have played a little bit of that as well. And don't forget Little Inferno. Weeks. Yeah, that one's weird, and I'll talk about that the next game because I haven't quite decided how I feel about that one yet. I've been playing Mario Brothers U as well, which is probably a good segue into. I, we all have the Wii U, right? Yes, yep, we do. We all get the Wii U. So we've had like how long have we had with it now? Probably almost a month, three weeks. Three, I'd say three weeks. Yeah, since the uh, long weekend in the states. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we've had it for a while. So I guess, well, a lot of people want to know, is it next gen or is it just a novelty tablet or is it just damn pretty cool? It's not next gen, in my opinion. What about you guys? Like one and a half. I'm torn because I think that we haven't seen the power being utilized yet. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be, I've, you know skeptics and rumors talking about it being as powerful, more powerful. So I think I'm on the fence. I'm I'm not going to give it a yay or a nay until I see no, the no. next. Well, what makes next. me think that it may be more to it than we actually think is that if you think about it, it's a machine that's running a game on the TV and on a tablet, both mm-hmm. in relative HD graphics, depending on the your setup, I guess. And is powering both those screens. So can you imagine if they make a game, okay, we're not using the tablet, using the Pro Controller, and just using all the hardware power to make something else, just not using the tablet. So it makes me think, could it be more if they just kind of... I definitely think it can be. Right now I'll call it next gen and a half. You yeah, know I, mean? like, I, I, I can agree with that a little bit too. But I think when I get a 1.5, and remember during the days of XCL, I was the... I created so much havoc with the Forza 1.5 or Forza <laughs> 2.5 arguments, but you know, really, you know, Nintendo's got something here, and I think mm-hmm. we have yet to see what it can do. 
I personally, I love the thing. I love it. Yeah, it it's uh, it's pretty it's, cool. Um, I, I, I have complaint. the. Sorry, go on. No, no, go on. No, no, go go with your complaint. I was gonna say it's <laughs> my one complaint. It's freaking slow. The the operating system, like it, it's just so slow. Did you, you do the most recent here? update? Sorry, yeah. I've been away. Remember, so you haven't done the update fix it? then. It yeah. fixed it. They fixed it. Yeah. Ooh. It, I didn't know that. It's still a little bit slow to boot up, but with yeah. going from menu to menu, it's a lot better. I did notice that too. It's a little bit slow, and uh, their online system needs a little bit of tweaking, like how you can add... give them credit. They're doing it this time. That's the thing, right? Yeah. Like yeah. they've yeah. finally taken their foot and put it into the online waters to the point where it's okay. Let's address this need for online gaming. It does seem to be popular. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Um, my, my gripe is that some people might be like, oh, well, just play on your Wii. But the Wii menu, like all of my content should have been integrated with the Wii U itself. Just transfer. I don't need to go look at that old Wii user interface. And I'm hoping that's something that they can fix later on. That I understand why they have it because there's going to be lots of people who still have Wiis. There's probably, um, I forget, I was listening to Victor Luce, uh, Vic's Basement podcast. And they were talking about how Nintendo killed Santa Claus because of the Wii U. Because there's going to be all kinds of kids who want this Wii U, but all kinds of dumb parents that are going to go to Toys R Us and Walmart and Best Buy and buy a Wii. Or, or no, as, no, they're going to buy a Wii Mini. Or, 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 or mm. as I like to call it, the Wii Wii. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> That's bad. It's bad, but it's true. It's a Wii Wii. And they could, they're going to get that, and they're opening it up, and they're going, Santa's an ass. He didn't bring me a Wii U. He's dumb. He doesn't know the difference. So they were saying that Nintendo's killed Santa because there's going to be a lot of confused... Like, even when I went to go buy Skylanders, um, when they came out with Giants, and I was waiting in line at uh, Toys R Us, they did a opening for it. It was Sunday morning, and I've seen all these parents buying Wiis because they were 100 bucks. They were on sale. So they were just trying to get rid of them for the... Yeah. The Wii U, I believe, and they're buying it. And I'm like, do they know what they're buying? And I'm like, do, do these parents know that's probably not what their kid's asking for? But luckily, we're in the know. My son yeah. desperately want one, one for Christmas. I got the biggest scam going on him ever. Um, I told him that uh, this Wii that we have in our home right now is a review unit, and I have to send it back that, like a week before Christmas. And he didn't ask Santa for a Wii U for Christmas. When he sent his letter, he asked for more Skylanders. And now that he's played it, he's like, oh, no, I want this. And I'm like, So he wrote a new letter to Santa and everything. I'm like, sorry, you didn't ask for Santa for it. I don't know if we're going to get it for you. So he's all sad that he doesn't think he's going to get a Wii U for Christmas. It's not coming from Santa. It's coming from the family. So me and my, uh, my in-laws and my brothers and my mom and everything all pitched in to get it for him. And it's going in his room. He's, he's in a be pretty excited because I, I i do plan to play it i'll be honest but it's not my main system i'm, I'm an xbox boy but yeah i thought we i thought we were pretty sneaky <laughs> to do that to him you're mean <laughs> no that's that's i'm glad he's getting it for christmas i you'll have to post pictures of uh, the look on his face when he when he opens it up oh definitely definitely and he's he's old enough now that I can play some family games and go, hey, what what do you think of this? Do you think this is a good game for kids? And just ask him, hey, did you do you think Mario? Like he t- he says Mario is too hard. I got to be the booster. So I'll sit there and be playing. All right, boost me up there. Okay, oh, right over there, buddy, and we'll hop on up. Which is really great for kids who are like interested in Mario, but they just don't have the skills quite yet to do it. Like my three year old could probably just go up to the tablet and go bam, 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 throw a bunch of blocks, but probably end up making me fall to my death but he could still do it which is really really cool where you know before with the Wii you could have all kinds of kids playing it pretty easily now it opens up even more like two or three year olds could play it pretty easily if the, the game was simple enough but yeah I think I'm on with Kirby where it's kind of next gen and one and a half but they could push it to be more cool 
I just imagine things like Pokemon. Can you imagine playing a Pokemon oh, game? Oh, with that, it? that's Skylanders. That's what that's going to happen. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's gonna, they're going to do it. You just know yeah. they are. Yeah, the tablet just, controller yeah. being a Pokedex. Yeah, oh, yeah. No doubt about it. That's coming. So I just can't wait to see my Zelda. Oh, you're one of those, <laughs> are you? I'm a Zel- oh, yeah. So I grew up with Zelda. Do you think so. Nintendo needs new IP, though? It's like, the, yeah, they got Mario, they got Zelda, they got Metroid, they got Donkey Kong, they got all these guys, but it's if you think about it, how different is Super Mario Brothers Wii U from Super Mario Brothers? Or, or I know there's different variations, different abilities, and kind of added things, but really, how different is it? From it's it's not like let's, let's get real it's it's yeah. it's not changing anything it's the it's not broke let's not fix it approach. Okay. I'm interested to see the new. Um, I'm sure there will be a Smash Brothers or Smash Melee or whatever. Those is aren't be they a, coming out one for 3ds? Or is that is just it? a rumor? See, I'm behind on my Nintendo products. Like I, I haven't, haven't heard about just coming. strictly 3ds. I could be wrong, but I haven't heard about them coming out one for the 3ds. Maybe it's just a rumor I heard. But uh, other features, I, just to stick with the Wii U a bit, like the other features is um, I don't have a tablet in my home. I have a laptop, so I really appreciate the browser on it. I know it doesn't render sites properly, but, uh, you know, for just basic browsing, I love it. I love the fact that um, my daughter can play Mario Wii U or, um, you know, there's not too, too many games that have that option where you can play it all fully on the, the um, tablet while I play on the 360. I do appreciate that feature as well. Scribble Knots. Uh, Scribble Knots is another one, yes. Same with uh, Little Inferno. My daughter beat that game, by the way. Oh, um, well, have her write the review. Yeah, she though. should be writing the review. <laughs> <laughs> um the asymmetrical gameplay, like Nintendo Land, uh, me playing on the tablet. Uh, you, have you played Nintendo Land at all? Yep. Okay, so Luigi's Mansion, for example, where I'm a ghost and I'm, you know, I can see on the screen where I'm going, and then she's using the Wii Mote, uh, and she's uh, Luigi with the flashlight. So you know, we're experiencing two different things in the same game like that. I love that. That's the thing that I think people are forgetting when, when the Wii was launched. They were like, yeah, right, that's going to fly. That Who wants to play motion controls, you know, and look how it did. And now we're talking about this asymmetrical yeah. gaming, and people are like, yeah, right, that's not going to fly. Who oh, wants to do that? Oh, but it does, and it works really well from the little that I've seen of it. So I think, like I said, this really needs, you know, it isn't going to be the same as the Wii was where Mm -hmm. Grandma and Grandpa were picking it up and and playing it. But that being said, it adds a whole new dynamic to this gaming scenario. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if they actually do add the ability to have a second tablet controller or gamepad. That'll be interesting to see. They said they were going to, just not right away, right? Just because those things are probably expensive to make. (laughs) Yeah. So... But uh, favorite game so far for the unit? Oh, geez. Thanks a lot. I've only really played... Hey, there was just a post about this, I thought. so. Yeah, Trevor and I were, were bantering about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I still enjoy Dark Side... Uh, Dark, uh, I can't even speak. <laughs> Dark Siders 2. Um, okay. You know, sure, it's not going to add anything new to what's already been out there. So I guess in terms of a, a revamped game for me, I like that. But you know what? I hate to say it, and although John addressed it, what's changed is Mario Brothers U. Like, how did you not enjoy playing Mario in high def with the fact that you could play on the gamepad or play on the TV? And, you know, my little ones, who are six and eight, they could just randomly drop blocks. I didn't care. Have fun. Go at her. And uh, that being said, you know, it's it, it, the, the, the overworld map in itself was a flashback to... Mario on the Super Nintendo, so it's uh, that that to me is up there as well. Yeah, it's definitely. Even though I do say it's nothing new, it is a fun game, and I do love it. I haven't played. I only played Nintendo Land and Super Mario Brothers U so far, so I don't really have a lot to compare to. But it's uh, yeah. it's definitely a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm gonna say pass on Sting Party. <laughs> you think? Uh, on what? <laughs> if you read my review. Sing party. Sing party. Oh, okay. <laughs> Comes with a mic. 
That's kind of good. <laughs> comes with a game. That's kind of bad. With- <laughs> <laughs> well, um, um, what's your most? What game are you looking forward to the most for the Wii U that's been announced? Oh, uh, Rain and Legends, of course. Oh, yeah, duh. <laughs> Actually, the demo should be out this week. No. Yes, I want to say you're right. We posted some news about that. Well, Let me grab my. Th- that's not it for me. For me, it's uh, Lego City Undercover. That too. That looks that really cool. That just looks freaking awesome because it's not off a franchise. It's just, it's just Lego. It's Lego just building. It, it's like uh, that's like that's what sold the system for me. Really, like for for a game. Like I was interested in it, but I'm like I saw Lego City Undercover and it's a Wii U exclusive, and I'm looking at it, and I'm a huge Lego. I, I own all the Lego games for 360 and DS. We have them all for DS because my son just loves playing them. And it's just craziness at how good that game looks and how it's going to be. You just change costumes and it just creates different abilities, which is kind of similar to the other LEGO games. It's just, I'm just really excited for that one. Simply put. No argument here. All right. So I think we exhausted the Wii U to uh, <laughs> pieces. I think we're we're in favor of it, but we're hoping that it's... Uh, yeah. A little bit more. So what uh, we'll sum it up that Jen doesn't think it's next gen. No. Get it? Yet. Jen doesn't <laughs> think it's next gen. Yeah. Uh, golf uh, golf I'm golf in the golf. middle. I think it's a bridging gap, but that it's still got the possibilities, and I think John seems to think it's the same way. Yeah, I'm just there you have it live on COG. <laughs> Definitely. So the the video game awards just happened. And Yay. There's a lot of skepticism and there's a lot of people who think it's uh, it's it's good times whatever uh, um like I, I wrote in our notes here is it a joke is it kind of legit or is it just good times is it really the the show to go to to go hey walking dead is the game of the year yeah um I think it should go to Jen right now she attended one so yeah. uh, uh, you know I'm, just, I'm gonna uh, I was surrounded by many, many uh, game journalists on the red carpet. Um, unfortunately, I think that many do think of it as a joke. There was n- nobody was really, t- truly taking it seriously. Um, that said, though, um, I certainly see an improvement from last year. Um, what do you guys think? Like compared to last year's show, uh, there was a lot of awkward moments last year, but I, I thought this was well done this year. Whether it's an, a legitimate awards show, though, no, I certainly don't think so. Now tell us why. Now tell you why. Yeah. yeah. It's filled with it's filled with game trailers and um, you know flashy lights and Samuel L. Jackson and um, you know it doesn't. I don't feel it really truly honors the the true celebrities of the industry, like the the game developers and and you know. Um, all, all the hardworking people behind the scenes. What do you think? I, it's, um, I, I you know, think it's a step I, okay, in the right I'll direction. It, to, I, I'll compare it to like our video game awards here in Canada. The CVAs. Well, I think the CVAs are somewhat more serious, that's for sure. But the CVAs are so much smaller right now. They're sure. they're in their infancy, but, coming that, from the right. lands. That's direct. We need something like that. We need something more serious to honor the developers, to honor these companies here or in the U.S., as opposed to this. Um, but on the flip side, you still got to make it entertaining so people will sit and watch and realize, oh, that's who made that. Mm-hmm. But in terms of the VGAs, I, you know, I can't believe it's been 10 years. Yeah. The fact that it's been going on for 10 years, I was like, What? That's, it doesn't seem like 10 years, I can tell you that much. It's exciting. I, I'm not going to lie. I had a great time while I was there. I loved, seeing, I loved seeing the world premieres, you know, being a part of the audience, the flashy lights, um, you know, seeing Tenacious D and Snoop Lion. Is that his name now? Snoop yeah, Lion. Yeah, Snoop Lion. No, it, it, was, it was exciting. It was fun. It was great seeing all the world premieres. You know, great seeing the celebrities walk the carpet, but those really, you know, like Jessica Alba, um, the guy from Chuck, like those aren't the celebrities to me, like Kojima walking the red carpet or um, Gary, (laughs) 
I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gary, what did she say? What did she call him? Gary? Oh, that um, that girl from G4. The guy from Valve. Oh like, yes, I think it was. It was. It was. It, I think it was Gary, wasn't it? She's calling him Gary. But anyhow, th- those people in my eyes, they're the celebrities, you know, not these these actors. And it's the the developers. It's the you know, um, the voice actors. It's all the people who have put so much hard work into the games. Those are the real celebrities to me. And I'd like to see them. Um, you know, I'd like to see them recognized. And and they are a bit here at the VGAs, but. Uh, um, it's kind of a big PR show. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. Jen brings up a really good point, and 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 we know about it. Like everybody's like, okay, what trailers are they going to debut? Yeah, that's exactly it. And that's- you know, that's a commercial side of it that I'm like, well, it's really about the developers, like Jen says. And yeah, don't get me wrong, the trailers are great. Yeah. You know, it's neat to see, mm-hmm. but even trailers are misleading. So it's like, you know, all this hype for a trailer, and then it's like, oh, that game's coming out. Like, last year they had games that were pretty supposed to be slated to come out in 2013. Mm-hmm. And then, and it's like, oh, okay. So I think they need to, I think Jen's right. There needs to be more recognition for the, the, the hard workers behind the scenes. Do you think they could go with something like the Oscar type approach that they can? I think that, I, I think that would be... Um... But then again, how entertaining is that for people outside of the industry? You just get Jimmy Fallon hosting that. He loves video <laughs> games. <laughs> oh no, here in Canada, <laughs> and then we can you get the what's the Stephanopoulos or whatever his name is from CBC? Strombo. Oh, uh, Strombo. Strombo. <laughs> Snuffle up against. <laughs> Snuffle, Snuffle up against. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and Big Bird. Yeah, yeah. don't forget about Bert but, Nerdy. You know, we actually we had this discussion when I was at the preview event. With I, I had this discussion discussion with other journalists, and it would be nice to have uh, a true award ceremony for for the gaming industry, not this flashy, you know, game trailer show, but to have a true award ceremony, a true honor to to earn that award. Who no, says it okay. has to be big and huge? Um, there's a lot of literary awards, like the the Hubble, I think it's called. It's a sci-fi award. It's very, very small. It's usually like a room of maybe a hundred people, mm-hmm. but it, it's. But is there award. that doesn't even exist though for the industry? You know. Not that I can think of. Cogs, you no. create it. There we go, Kirby. Put it down. There, there we go. The things to do. Yeah. Create. But, legitimate uh, awards for the gaming industry. But it, no, I don't think this could be considered a, a, a legitimate awards show. Dom. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of on that fence. It's, it's, it's entertaining. It's oh, certainly. great to certainly. see, you know, but it really is. It's kind of like a stopgap in between the E3s and the Tokyo game shows and e- even, even PAXs and stuff. It's kind of like, well, those are more for the fans. Like, I'm pretty sure the fans would rather go to PAX and see all this stuff rather than seeing it on TV. I'd love to do a poll with our listeners whether who thought they, it was legitimate and who, you know, I'd love to hear some opinions get from our the forums <coughs> and yeah, do it. Please yeah, tweet yeah. at us or get on the forums and Facebook. You know, let us know what your thoughts are. Facebook us. Are, are they a legitimate award show? Um, does the, do we need a... Um, a show to recognize the, the devs and, and the hardworking people behind the scenes. So definitely tweet at us or go on the forums. So, yeah. speaking of the VGA, so did anything excite you about the, the game trailers? Were you surprised by anything? Is that Metal Gear Solid 5? <laughs> there sure is a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, speculation that it is. And you know we're never gonna know until time comes. You I tried know? to get it out of the PR, but no, <laughs> they would not. Com- com- you know they would not uh, confirm or deny. Why didn't mm. you you know spike their drink or something and? <laughs> yeah, should have well, stuck around at the party after. Well, just a little community plug here before I forget. We're talking about Game of the Year awards on the forums right now. Blizz is. Uh, doing our COG Game of the Year Awards. He does them every year. Normally he has prizes for us, but he's uh, had a rough year, so I'm providing some prizes. I'm doing a, a points card of uh, $20 points cards of 
whichever network that person wants it for. I think um, Audi was going to see if they could rustle up some stuff, so it's a good way to earn some prizes. I'm going to provide a autographed picture of my avatar. Oh, how nice. That you can use for purposes. <laughs> She's serious. <laughs> no. She's serious. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yes, go to um, GameCanadian.com that point you right to our new community. Um, tell us what you think to see if we need to make any improvements. But find, uh, search for the Game of the Year awards for Cog and uh, download the spreadsheet and send it into Blizz, and he'll do a nice little bullet show of who won. I can already, I can usually predict some of them for sports. We're probably going to have NHL again, things like that. I, uh, how many years yeah, has NHL the, won? I've Pardon got me? the awards up right here. Let's just give them a taste of what we're looking at. Game of the Year, which is a typical one, so I'll just gloss over that. But we're looking at the multiplayer game of choice. And your choices are Borderlands 2, Black Ops 2, Diablo 3, Forza Horizon, Guild Wars 2, Halo 4, Need for Speed Most Wanted, or NHL 13. So, you know, most anticipated game we want to hear about, biggest disappointment which we may even briefly talk about here. Studio of the Year, uh, exclusive games to each platform, um, best downloadable game, genres we address. So we're not just doing little things. We're doing you know, as much as we can. So as uh, Johnny says, head over to GameCanadian.com and uh, let's give us your thoughts. Go oh, do it. And if I, you're new to the community too, you know, make sure to go introduce yourself and... You know. I was just speaking of community, just looking on Twitter right here. We do have a question from uh, Vereen Jubal. Hopefully I pronounced right. He wants to know what some of the games we're looking forward to next year. I, th- I-, I did mention uh, Lego, oh City, Lego City Undercover for myself. I'm looking forward to. Um, geez. I don't even like, know what's coming out next year anymore. It's just oh my goodness, large. Bioshock Infinite, um, Splinter Cell. Oh yes, Splinter uh, Cell, yes. Um, I'm not a big Grand Theft Auto fan, so I can't say that. Yeah, same. Um, Tomb Raider. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the. I agree with Tomb Raider <laughs> as well. Tomb Raider as well. That this, It just looks like what Tomb Raider should have always been. It, it looks like a badass woman on a, on a actually the more page. I watch Tomb Raiders trailers which we have at uh, CanadianOnlineGamers.com um, is it, they're amazing I'm surprised where they are really going with that series it's going to be phenomenal mm-hmm. and no more big chest <laughs> yay yeah I was waiting for that <laughs> um, you know I, I will say this after playing uh Metal Gear Rising? Yeah. You're going to want to play that. I can't wait to review it. So. Well, you know, Gears of Wars, the new Gears of oh, Wars. Yeah, coming that one out. too. I don't know how I, I feel I, about I, that. I know. I played all three I, of them and I'm like, what yeah, are they going to do now? I feel like I'm kind of fatigued with the whole series and I don't see how, I don't see how they could go on with it. It's Baird, right? Baird and, uh, I don't particularly like that character either. And I'm quite interested to see what Ubisoft's going to do with Watch Dogs. Yeah, is that uh, Last of Us? That's, that's that's slated for 2013 as of now, but okay. we don't know. Be- like you know, oh. uh, they've been pretty coy about what it's going to be released on and mm-hmm. where it's going. And but that game at E3 was like it really caught me by surprise, right? So I think it caught everybody by surprise. Yeah, and John just mentioned The Last of Us, but yeah. one of my most favorite anticipated games. South Park, a stick of truth. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Come on, have oh you not seen gosh. that trailer? That looks fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I just thought of another I made, one. <laughs> I made the mistake of when I was at the VGAs, my, my mom and my daughter came over to my house to to watch the VGAs just to see if they could see me on the red carpet or see me in the audience, and <laughs> they left. They left. They turned it off, unfortunately, after seeing that South Park trailer. <laughs> oh, they had it uncut, did they? Yeah. Oops. So. <laughs> uh, other game I'm looking forward to now that I think of it is Star Wars 1313. If it does come out next year. If it does come out. I have a feeling that's definitely going to be next gen hardware. After sitting through the uh, demo at E3, and you know they were running it on a pretty powerful PC. 
like twin cards, the whole bit. So I'm kind of wondering. I don't think we'll see that until next gen. You heard it here first at Cog. <laughs> Probably. It's just too damn good looking. It just looks amazing. Stick of truth. Do you, guys really, of truth. Do you guys really think it's Boba Fett? Because there's all the stories about Star Wars 13, 13, that the character is just not who it's going to look like. They just put somebody in there for people to walk through with it and see what it's like. I, I don't know. I'm not that yeah, edumacated for the Star Wars edumacated. universe. Edumacated. <laughs> I'm, I read the Star Wars novels and stuff like that, so I'm really following the... We won't even touch on Lucas films right now. We and we can't forget that's God a of whole Wars. Another podcast. We can't <laughs> so, forget God of Wars coming out next yeah, year as well. I, I got oh, to yeah. actually play demo of it at the Sony event. And it's just it's God of War, but it's just the enemies are just like crazy. It's awesome, violent. But you just brutal. said something right there. It's God of War. It's God of War. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this will be what the fourth one on the fourth Hunting. one in the yep. actual um, series, the not counting yeah. the yeah, not counting the, the handhelds. The handhelds. So it's just like. Wow. But then again, we're looking at the fourth Gears of War. We're playing the fourth Halo. <laughs> or we're playing the seventh or eighth COD. I, I, I can't See, this even... Is, I, um, I'm so... Uh, like I said, I'm fatigued with these series. I need something new. I need something... Stick of truth. I need stick of truth. <laughs> All right. So one more, we got a couple more questions in this reading. I'm here from Empire Armchair. Uh, he just wants us to name our game of your choice. No explanation. Just name it. Far Cry 3. Halo 4. Borderlands 2. Ooh, all shooters. All right. And (laughs) also, what was your fondest gaming-related memory from 2012? That's easy for me. Um, Extra Life. Extra Life. That was awesome, just playing with Kirby for, I don't know how many hours we played, like five, six hours. Oh, God. I'm surprised my projector didn't blow up. (laughs) But that's, you know, how much money did we raise for Extra Life? This year, uh, I can look I it up was, right now. Yeah, I'll look it up. I know I was no, I but yeah, I think we raised uh, six, seven thousand uh, dollars. Maybe that sound will pop up on. Uh, we raised four thousand six hundred and fifty-nine dollars. Our, our goal I was thirty-five hundred. I know mine, but mine's kind of like the coolest. And fi- I'm gonna go with coolest gaming moment. Can I do that? Sounds yes, good. you may. Okay, shaking hands with Kojima last week. Nerd. <laughs> no, sorry, geek. That come on, he's like one of the gods of gaming. I t- really tried hard not, and I didn't squee, but I went inside. I was just going. Why couldn't you squee? <laughs> oh, but that was that was my that was the best gaming moment I had this year. No doubt about it. It's tough to follow you guys. Listen to you're all like one had meaning, the other one had meaning to the individual. So I gotta find something deep and philosophical. Do you need some time to think about that? Well, I guess there's there's probably two things. Um the one thing that sticks out in my mind was my 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 son and my daughter being able to play Giants this year and Skylanders all through this year with them. The first Skylanders we continued to play it all through the year. And then when Giants came out, the excitement on their faces, being able to sit down and open a game like that and have them play with me was just, I just can't even say how much it actually meant to me. Because my kids are my kids. They're gamers. Un- 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 unwillingly for my wife, of course. <laughs> because my son is just, when he gets gaming, he gets so focused. But uh, And the other one for me was to meet the... Uh, the producer of the Mario series, not uh, when I'm talking producer, it's uh, he's he's like second or third in line from uh, the man in charge, Mr. Miyamoto. But interviewing him for oh, must have been about 45 minutes, talking about Mario Brothers on the 3DS and the Mario Brothers U on the Wii was just amazing to see the love and passion he had for everything Mario. It was it was so, somewhat humbling to talk to somebody that cared about that series so much. There's a couple good uh, COG moments this year, some achievements getting on the, the Far Cry 3 kind of poster there. It was pretty cool. When I saw that, I'm like, that's awesome. And, uh, and was it at the VGAs as well that uh, COG was on there for the score for Call of Duty? 
Uh, it's actually well. it's a it's a commercial that's been running on um, on various shows, uh, like uh, one of Jen's favorites, uh, the Biker Show. Oh, Sons of Anarchy. Sons really? of Anarchy, yeah. Wow, that's, a, that's the, pretty big. Yeah, they came up with a Call of Duty commercial, and our name and score was up on the uh, the big screen with with nice. some of the big ones. So it seems like it's been a good year for Cog, though. I I mean, I it, you know, I, this is my first year with the team, but. You know, we've really, it seems like we've been really making a presence at events, at, uh, you know, getting out there, getting to meet everybody, so. Which actually, actually is a good segue for me to probably, uh, I sent out an email, but, uh, you know, all those behind the scenes workers, all of our volunteer writers and those who do previews and, you know, we have so many people behind the scenes that create what COG is and, and for that I think as part of the founding group that, you know, um, Trevor and I and Chad talked about it. We're so thankful for those people who volunteer their time to help us become what we've become. And, you know, we want to continue this journey with everyone. It's uh, it's one of those moments where I just want to cheer up and <laughs> have a little cry. Well, hopefully we can get some of that team on here sometimes, you know. Yeah. it's uh... Well, that's what we plan to do. And that's actually a good segue on <laughs> where's the podcast going. <laughs> One of our uh, big uh, big contributors this year was T-Monkey, and he's been asking us where's the uh, podcast going to go. So uh, shout out to you, T-Monkey. Um, yeah, John, I think that's you've got more of an idea where you want to go with this. So this is in your hands. All right. Um, one of the things, like through discussions with uh, Shad and Kirby and everything, a little bit more of Shad, is that I feel that, as always with XCL and COG and the game Canadian type of brand, is that uh, we're about community. It's We have a front end, we do reviews, and we, we have videos, we have straight up now, we have the Blitz, so we have all this stuff, but it's all centered around community. And as it always should be. And I wanted to make our podcast about gaming and our community a little bit. And there'll be things where we'll have community members on there. Like a lot of our community members do certain things. Like, uh, who was it? Uh, Francesco there was uh, raising some money for cancer and stuff like that. Have him on there. Get him to tell us about that. Um, we did Extra Life. We'll have a, a, the Extra Life team on. Maybe we'll do a podcast this year with us on there. You know, at the 24th hour and see how stupid we sound at that oh. point. <laughs> you know, th- th- things like that. Yeah, it's, we're going to talk about games. We're going to probably talk about movies and things about that. But it's always, first and foremost, going to be about the community. And we're going to reference our community, involve the community through, be it through Facebook or Twitter or the, the, the forums. That will probably have an email made up eventually. Probably be Cogcast at CanadianOnlineGamers.com or maybe I'll do a Gmail one so it's a little bit easier to receive attachments, things like that if people want to send us things in. But but that's kind of how I see things going is just having it focused around community and gaming and going from there. You can't go wrong with the people who've built the website who've been – like I've been through the various websites. I think it was 2003. No, not 2003. That's a different website. Wow, 2000 eight or nine I kind of started so it's been four years and I know Kirby's been doing stuff like this from what 99 was it yeah so and I know Jen you're like recently been around for a year but like the community you got to get on yeah. there we're telling you get on there the, the but the good thing with Jen and I think I can amazing. toot Jen's horn here and I don't mean that literally uh, is that uh, <laughs> she's been community oriented. She's been to many events over the years. She's well connected in terms of yeah. the pulse of what goes on. Like yeah. for those who don't know, uh, uh, Jen and John are basically in Ontario. They're not, mm-hmm. they're, you know, a, a train ride away from Toronto where yeah. in the Canadian video game world, everything happens. And I yeah. live on the West Coast and I'm <laughs> a good five hour plane trip from Toronto, but. And and that said about you know I, I may not be all that active on on the cog forums but I am very active when it comes to social media oh, definitely. and I know there's a great deal of um, cogs uh, you know cog community members who um, I've got to know through Twitter so but I do promise I will make a better effort to get on there and 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 get I myself have your in address this. I will hunt I know, you down I know 
Um, I do have a list for Canadian online gamers, which I do need to update, but I'll probably make it on the Game Canadian Twitter account. So it'll be like Game Canadian yeah. slash Canadian online gamers, and there'll be people part of the community. We'll set that up for people to check that out. I'll put that on my to-do list over the the next week or so. And the big thing we need, too, is community to tell us what they want out of us. And it isn't always just going to be us three. We'll kind of be the the heart and soul, but, you know, we'll get people like you know, the community members, but I'd also like to get people within the uh, with, within the video game world. I would love to have people from Microsoft, Nintendo, or uh, Sony come on, and I'm sure there are, uh, you know, the people we know within that circle would be more than willing to. Yeah. Well, speaking of, we're talking about community and everything, I just got to give a shout out to someone that we all know, but uh, Raggio, Mr. Switch on Xbox Live, has oh, been announced yes, as the Xbox, Xbox Canada Community Manager. So uh, I, we're all, I think, pretty good friends with him. So I was really, really proud of him when I saw that. And I'm like, finally. I can't think of a maybe, better person for that position, honestly. Maybe I'll go back yeah. to that community because there was I hope a, so. I hope so. That's how, actually, that's how I got involved in all of this was through the Xbox Canada forums. That's how all of this began for me. So, yeah. That's, uh, he's the perfect person to do it, so... Yeah, definitely. Like, um, it's good time. And I think what we need to do too is I'll, uh, Johnny or I will post on the forums a pin thread for, you know, suggestions for the podcast and, um, people feel free to write in there. We have a hashtag. Conquest. (laughs) (laughs) I'm pretty proud of that one. So uh, if you're, you're familiar with Twitter, you, you, we have a hashtag. So it's, uh, number sign, of course, and Cogcast. So if you ever have any comments, questions, need a shout out, make sure to use that hashtag. Sounds good. So yeah, I think that's going to wrap up Cogcast episode one for us. We're just coming up about an hour. If you, uh, you can follow, uh, Cog on ga- at Game Canadian on Twitter. It's the same for Facebook. The website's CanadianOnlineGamers.com and you can find us all on Twitter as well. I'm Johnny Zio, that's Johnny XEO. Then there's Kirby at Kirby underscore Y and Jen. I'm Jen. Jen Dingle. Yeah, I've changed mine. Jen yeah, I, Dingle. I, I, yeah, I almost said, uh, I would The old one. I remember, I just reminded me of the joke you used to do it that you need to uh, find a. Marry a man with the last name Barry. And take the oh hyphenated gosh. name. I know. I know. <laughs> He's remember out there. That? Dingle Barry. <laughs> He's out there. Uh, or Hopper, Hopper works too. Yeah, Dingle so, Hopper. Dingle Hopper. So, so we'll call this the the episode of the Dingle Hopper, I guess. And we'll, we'll, right, that works. <laughs> we'll leave it at that, and uh, yeah, I'll get this edited as soon as possible, and I'll probably gonna edit this part off the end.